So I tried starting everything up by running yarn start in terminal and it actually crashed for me and I had some problems with TypeScript. So we need to fix a few things in the tsconfig. To start off with, I added this lib or lib compiler option and added dom and esnext. And then I also said skip lib check. I turned it to true. It was initially false. And then in the package.json, I added a dependency, um, a dev dependency to at types graphql. Um, so for that, I just did yarn add as a dev dependency uh, types. So I installed that, and then when I ran yarn start, it looked like this when I opened up localhost 3000. So you should see a similar thing. Now what we're going to do today is get started with making requests. And if we come over here to our folders, I can go over to the mutations and see the ones that I can make. So we're gonna create uh, an auction today. Uh, so we wanna run this mutation or call this mutation. We're gonna be using Apollo for that, but we're gonna start off by creating a form. So I'm gonna call this create auction form dot tsx. Uh, and then for this, I usually use RPC, which is a shortcut I have created to create a pure component. But I recently just created a new one, which I call RH. Um, and this is for just functional components. Uh, so if you wanna follow along, I'm gonna be doing that. So if you'd like to create your own little shortcut, you can. How I do it is I go to code and then preferences and then user snippets. Um, and then those user snippet that I search for is TypeScript React. And then I have a couple of them. Here is what my one looks like for the RH one. So basically you give it whatever you want your prefix or the shortcut to be, and then what you want it to actually print out there. And then here's my RPC one, which is a React Pure component. So you can add those if you'd like, um, but let's go ahead and create this. So I'm gonna say create auction form. And here I'm just gonna have a div and I'm gonna say hi, and we're gonna render this and just make sure that everything looks good. Um, in my app.tsx, I'm gonna just get rid of all this stuff now and I'm gonna render the create auction, um, uh, create auction form. And it's not auto-completing, let's make sure I didn't mess anything up. I'm exporting it, right? Copy that. I always feel like something's wrong when it doesn't auto-import. Uh, like I messed something up for some reason. Let's go ahead and get rid of this logo. Um, and I'll just import this myself. So import from, and let's go ahead and grab create auction form. All right, and let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I can see the word hi, perfect. Uh, next thing, I'm just gonna get rid of the test.css and the index.css and the logo because we're not gonna be using those. And the index over here, I'm just gonna get rid of that import. And I'm also gonna be possibly using some hooks in this, or at least giving them a try. And right now I am using 16.6 uh, 16 of React DOMs, or React DOM and React. So I need to upgrade these if I want to use it. So right now you need to have at least 16.7 to use hooks. And so that's currently the next tag. So I can either specify the version or say at next to install it. And this is just, you can find this information on NPM if you go to the versions tab. So that's what I usually do. Um, and so what I'm gonna do here is just say yarn add react at next and then react dom at next to install the latest versions. Um, well, not the latest. Just, just a heads up, this is not actually released yet and you shouldn't use this in production, um, but we're gonna be trying it out because it looks like it's the future. Um, and then we're using TypeScript and the types are not currently out yet, um, but there's a GitHub issue about it and I'll link this below if you wanna see the status of it. Um, but this guy gave us a shortcut or something that we can do now to get it to work. Uh, we can add what's called a React hooks.d.ts and paste this in there. So I'm gonna create a new folder and source called types, and I'm gonna create this that he's talking about. And inside of that, I'm gonna add this stuff. All right. And so now when I import React, 
I can say, and I should see in here if I say, I don't know, use context, for example, it's going to see and pick up and know that that actually is a thing. All right, so back to the um, form over here. Let's go ahead and create this. We're going to add another package. I know we're installing a lot of stuff, but we should pretty much be one of the last things that we install. Actually, I can think of one more thing we need to add. Why don't we add it while we're here? We also need GraphQL tag. Uh, so Formic is what we're going to be using to do libraries. Um, it's pretty much just my favorite library for it, but feel free to use something else if you prefer it. Um, and then we're going to be using the material UI icons, or not icons, but the components that we installed. So let's go ahead and start by importing from Formic. And here I'm just going to say, uh, we'll just use Formic. We're going to use the render prop here. And we're going to say, we're going to say that. And here I can pass in the types. So I'm going to say interface and I'm going to say form values. So here I create a type definition for what the form state looks like. So in my case, if I go to amplify backend, I can see what I created. So I'm going to look at my schema. So here I created an auction and I have a name and a price. I can also go to GraphQL and I can see the mutation itself and I can see Actually, I guess I could go to the console on AWS and you can also see what this stuff is. Um, but anyway, so we saw that we have a name, which is a string, um, and a price, which is a number. And we can pass that with angle brackets right here. So form values. And here I'm going to say initial values. Um, and here I'm going to pass in the initial values that the form state is going to have. In this case, the name is going to be an empty string and the price, let's say the price is zero to begin with. Um, inside of here, I'm just going to render a div that says hi again for now. Um, and we can see we're still missing some values. So the value we're missing is on submit. So let's pass that prop in. And here we're going to take the name and the price and we can do something with it. Um, in our case, we actually want to call that mutation. So uh, we'll do that in a second. So let's go ahead and complete our form though. So I'm going to, uh, I was going to add a material UI thing, but I want to add, just wrap this in a form instead real quick of a div. All right. So now we can paste in these guys. So I'm currently on the text field component. Copy that. And let's see if it'll let me autocomplete. It won't. Uh, I can just grab it from the top here. Uh, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but the way I autocomplete is I just move my cursor there and I hit control space to bring that up. And you can see now it gives me some stuff. I'm not gonna worry about a class name or ID um, the value I'm going to get from Formic. So values, and then we can say values.name, and we can pass in a handle change. And that, uh, for that to work, we need to pass in a name. So I'm going to say name, which is going to be name. All right, so let's see if that works. And now I can type some stuff and that looks good to me. So I'm gonna create one more field like that. And this is going to be what I call price. And I kind of want them to be, I could either put divs around them to do a new line. I'm gonna do the cheating way and just do a line break there. Uh, and then lastly, I want to have a button right here to submit this. So I can come over here to the buttons. And we can pick our favorite one. Um, I think I want one of these. Let's try a contained button. So we'll copy this. And we'll just pick our favorite variant. I'm going to pick 
just the default one. Um, there we go. And then that's going to be just our submit. So we'll get rid of the class name and we're going to say submit. And then our button, we just have to say type is submit. And then up here in our form, there's an on submit, which we can just pass the handle submit. And this is coming from Formic. All right, now I'll come back over here. Um, that's all messed up. I'll do another line break. Um, and that looks better. Um, I don't know if I'm in love with this button, but I think I'll keep it for now. So now if I inspect, I'm just going to console log the form here so I can make sure the values are actually taking form. And we'll say submit, the values show up. So now the last step is to actually just call that mutation. So I'm going to wrap this with a mutation component. And this is also a rendered prop. And I am wrapping this entire thing. So this is where hooks can be handy. Is you'll notice I'm actually kind of nesting these. So I have mutation and then formic. And then I have my form inside of it. Um, with hooks we can kind of flatten that and that'll be nice. But until then uh, we'll use these things. So uh, here's, here's what's going on with this mutation here. So this is coming from React Apollo. We can specify some types for TypeScript, which we'll do in a second. I'm first going to tell it the mutation that I want to call. Uh, in this case, I can look at my mutations over here. And I saw I really wanted create auction. So let's copy that. And we'll auto import that. And then we can't just pass it directly. We need to call GQL around it. And that is what we get from a GraphQL tag. And actually, sometimes it lets me autocomplete it. Um, not today, it looks like. And I can now add the types, which are coming from um, this API folder. And I can see here's the input. Um, and why we care about this is I can say create auction mutation. I believe is what it's called. Let's go ahead and double check. So I can just search in here. So it's mutation and mutation variables. Mutation and mutation variables. Um, so we're, we imported that from API and now we get the type definitions. So my function here, which I'm gonna say create auction, uh, we're gonna call right here. So create auction. And because of that, we're going to pass in some variables here. And I can hit control space, my cursor there, and I can see we need to pass an input. And we need to pass an ID, which I believe we don't actually have to pass. It looks like it's possibly undefined, in which case I assume AppSync handles that, which we're going to let it create an ID for us. And we'll pass in the name and the price there. Um, and then we're going to get some kind of response from that. So I'm going to make this function asynchronous. And we're going to await the response, and then I'm going to console.log it. Um, and I'm going to get rid of that. All right, so I'm going to say first auction, it's going to be 12 bucks, and we're going to submit. And we can see what it looks like here. And we can see the ID of the auction that was created, the name, and the price. So awesome. So that was our first mutation that we called that we actually sent data to AppSync and received data back. And the next thing what we're going to do is actually show some of the auctions that we have created.